I'm going to downward depart from 75 months to 60 months, and uh, followed by five years of probation, two years of pro uh, the first two years of probation of which will be uh, in CC2. During the term of probation, the defendant is not to have any um, contact initiated with any of the three older children. Uh, those children will be free once they reach age of majority to have contact with um, the defendant if they so choose. Welcome back. This morning, we're shining a spotlight on the pleas coming from Tim Ferreter. You know, he was convicted of child abuse and false imprisonment last month and sentenced to spend five years in prison, followed by a five-year period of probation. But now he's asking to be released from prison while he waits for his appeal to take place. Now, he's citing some different job offers in the motion that he says he has lined up if he is released, even having his attorneys provide two copies of job offers. One to be a sales assistant with Dream Outdoors Properties or a sales position with Mazda of Palm Beach. But now an attorney representing the Mazda dealership claims that the offer letter is a complete and unequivocal forgery, saying, quote, at no time has Mr. Ferreter applied to Mazda of Palm Beach, let alone been given an offer of employment at the dealership. Moreover, the letterhead appearing on the document is incorrect, as it is nothing more than a copy and paste of a website graphic. Oof. Let's bring in our guest now. We have Tim Ferreter's defense attorney, Priya Murad, joining us on the show. Priya, good morning to you. Thank you for coming on opening good statements morning. this morning. And I have to commend you for your advocacy in the courtroom for your client. Uh, you fought Thank really, you. really hard for him against some very, very disturbing facts. And so let's start with uh, first. You requested uh, he be released from prison uh, pending his appeal. What is the basis that you're appealing on? So there are several bases for the appeal. I'm not the appellate attorney on the case. Um, he has hired an appellate attorney that's also handling the appellate bond motion. So the different um, grounds that we have are really listed in the motion for new trial that was filed. Uh, if I could summarize it, a lot of evidence regarding the child's behavior prior to removal and after removal were excluded. There are also um, our inability to cross-examine the state's expert on certain issues. Uh, we mentioned that there were pretrial rulings that we had that we believe were um, unfair to Mr. Ferreter and led to him not having a fair trial. So there's several different grounds for appeal, but I am not the appellate attorney. Um, I can just summarize what I believe the issues are. Okay, fair enough. Um, you did author, or at least co-author the motion, right, uh, with the request for bond pending his appeal. Uh, and attached to that, we know were those two offer letters. Um, Priya, what happened here? The Mazda dealership is saying it's a forgery. So we would not have submitted a letter, obviously, to the court, uh, but for believing in good faith that there was a job offer. I know that there were a number of comments, and this was in the letter by the lawyer uh, that we actually received last evening about how Mazda's business has been affected by this. So we withdrew it immediately upon learning that there were any issues, and we are still investigating what happened because we also learned about this last evening. So we issued a notice immediately withdrawing um, what we submitted uh, as to the Mazda job offer, and we are now investigating what happened. Priya, where did that offer letter come from? I cannot give you that answer because it was provided to us by, or it was provided to the appellate attorney by uh, a number of friends and family. So when, even in my character reference letters, we just receive a number of them. So I don't have that exact answer for you um, because I was not the one who got the, the letter in my hand. Okay. And so did the appellate attorney co-author that motion with you? I saw there was another attorney's name on that motion. Is that who the... Uh, yes, he's primarily okay. handling, he's an excellent attorney, he's handling the appellate bond motion and the appeal. Okay, um, so is it your position that you had no idea that this letter was a fraud? It's the truth that I had no idea that there was no job offer from Mazda. And neither did the other attorney. Okay. Or we would not have submitted it, right? 
So it came from someone, some either family member or friend of Tim Ferritter's. Um, That's my understanding. We received a letter that he had this job offer. And so then we, in good faith, believe that it was in fact a job offer and attached it as one of two options that he has if the court is to grant a pellet bond. Was there any attempt to verify with your client that those offers were in fact bona fide offers? Yes, I mean, we would not have submitted it but for believing in good faith that they were actual offers. Okay. Let's talk some more about what life is like for him right now uh, behind bars. He didn't look good after that first stint behind bars. I remember seeing just a remarkably different look, even just on his face, his expression, everything, the body language, after just being incarcerated for a short time. Um, now he's been in a, a little longer. Um, what's he saying about how uh, life behind bars is for him, Priya? So, uh, you know, we as accountability throw human beings in cages. So I don't think for anybody it's a particularly pleasant experience. Um, I, I think that if you ask anybody would they rather be in custody or out of custody, they're going to say out of custody whether they're Tim Ferritter or not. So of course this is not a, an experience that is pleasant for him or the hundreds of thousands of people that we have put in cages. Uh, I have a clip here. Uh, I want to play a clip uh, from your client, Tim Ferritor, at his sentencing. Uh, this was his message uh, to his son, uh, the, the boy who is uh, the victim in the child abuse and the false imprisonment. I love you. Your mama loves you. We're all very sorry for everything. Everything you have gone through, everything you continue to go through. I am empathetic to where you are placed now. I did all that I could to help you avoid that. As your father, I wish I could be by your side now and stand strong with you. I thank you, Lenny, for your honesty and courage when you spoke of mercy a few weeks back. I my first boy. Priya, has Tim had any contact with his son? No, there's a court order that it's only permitted upon initiation of the children after they turn 18. So he's not permitted to have that contact. Mm, okay. Who's been visiting him? Has Tracy gone to visit him? We don't allow in our jail uh, visits by person other than lawyers. So people are left there to not see their loved ones in person again. Um, they're able to see their loved ones by video. I don't keep track of everybody who is visiting him by video, but as long as they're on an approved list, then they are able to uh, video conference. But in the Palm Beach County jails and in most pretrial detention facilities, you are not allowed in-person visits with your loved ones. Mm. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's interesting where you are. Every state is different. Uh, let's listen to a clip from uh, the child at sentencing, uh, Tim Ferritor's adoptive son speaking. Some might wonder why I came to see you again. A lot, a lot of people do not like what you did to me. Well, it's because behind this monster of madness, guilt, anger, and wrongdoing, I see a soft spot. Most people think that I am sensitive when it comes to talking about you. That is true and false. I do want to talk about you. That's because I still love you. And I'll always love you. Until the end of my days. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's really, really sad. It's painful to listen to that. Uh, Priya, was there any regret your client had in rolling the dice and going to trial? He had a really uh, generous plea offer that was on the table that he could have taken. Any regret from him? I don't know that people after trial necessarily feel regret. I think people go to trial because they want their stories heard. I would also disagree with the idea that it was a generous plea offer. Um, he was only sentenced to three years higher than that when the state was asking for 15 years and he faced 40 years um, maximum and the judge did downward depart. So, you know, there was a story here that 
needed to be told, um, and he wanted to fight for his freedom. But this idea of regret at trial, it's, it's the government's obligation to prove the case. The reason we don't have trials is because of things like mandatory minimums and trial taxes, not because it's not what every individual accused of a crime is entitled to. Well, no one's saying that every individual isn't entitled to a trial. Of course they are. Everyone has a right to, to a fair trial. I mean, I'm asking about him in particular, not everybody else. If he has regret um, because now he got more time than he could have taken if he would have taken the deal. Uh, Priya. I can't tell you. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was saying I can't tell you what's in his head, but I think that after any guilty verdict, people have a lot of different thoughts. I can tell you that we went into the trial with the belief that the government needs to prove this case and that there are a number of different issues related to this parent-child relationship that should be exposed. We didn't know what the rulings would be, which is why we're doing the appeal, which um, in, in my belief did uh, hamstring the defense quite a lot. Uh, Priya, what's going to be your next move now that there is this uh, big problem with the document that was proffered by you and the appellate counsel on your client's behalf saying that he's got this job offer pending and counsel for the Mazda dealership is saying it, it's a forgery? So we've immediate, we filed a notice that last night that withdraws that document, and now we are investigating what happened. We will have a hearing on the appellate bond motion, and as we learn more, um, we'll explain to the judge what happened, should that be a consideration that he has. But, you know, prosecutors and judges make error every day in courtrooms. We're in a business where we work with human beings, and we rely on human beings for information. And Tim Ferreter didn't have anything to do with this. So we are now in a position where we're doing what any prosecutor would do if they learned that they had information that was false. They retract it and they tell us, I'm sorry, I didn't know this. I'm looking into it, but I'm not relying on it any longer now that I know this information. Priya, what about the other offer? Is that one something that you have verified as valid? The second offer he said that he got? Yes. Okay. All right, we got to leave it there. We're out of time. Priya Murad, thank you for your time this morning. Take good care. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks. You're welcome.